Have you ever heard about how standardized tests are racist? See, education is elevation, and today we're going to be exploring how standardized test archetypes are racist gatekeepers. Because too many of us believe that standardized tests are neutral and objective, which leads us to ignoring the racial roots and racial disparities that comes at the cost of our students. Stating it simply, these inadequate tests cannot assess melanated students' capabilities nor skills. See, metaphorically, it's like having a cat, a dog, and a fish. And the standardized test is who can climb the tree. Now, which one of these three is going to have the advantage in climbing a tree? And which one of these is going to have an inherent disadvantage? Well, I answer that question with a question. When the last time you heard about a dog or a fish climbing a tree? No test can escape the social location it was made to access. Here's for context. Long before the pandemic, melanated students faced discrimination in a variety of ways. One of the most alarming ways is the use of standardized tests. And shout out to Allison Gaines and Medium.com for this article too. Let's explore some more. No cap. I know when a lot of people hear the idea that standardized tests are racist, it's going to be easily dismissive because, you know, we've seen as being complainers and, you know, we've been conditioned. We're so conditioned. We've been conditioned to believe that standardized tests are archetypes that hold the keys to students' educational opportunities. Their performance shapes their futures, determining which doors open. That's what it means to think about the archetypes of standardized tests being gatekeepers. When it's wrong and clear up, whether our students re-enter the educational system skewed against them, banks on parents, teachers and educational administrators right now. Understanding the racial nature of those standardized tests takes us unpackaging the fallacious nature of the IQ test. And just so we're clear, fallacious is defined as being based on mistaken belief. Now to understand the role of standardized tests as a tool of educational assessment, you got to know what the first standardized test was, which is that old fallacious IQ test. You know, let the Western world say Europe is the center of intellectual thought, which is where does those standardized tests start? See, the history of the IQ test starts in 1904, when Alfred Bennett and Theodore Simon create the world's first intelligence test. And tell me if this sounds ableist. These Frenchmen wanted to distinguish between the developmentally disabled children and those who exhibited laziness. Pete Game, though, even Bennett himself doubted the intelligence test ability to be applied universally or to quantify intelligence successfully. And even though the creator of the test warned us about the misapplication of it, it became the basis of standardized tests for students of the modern era today. Man, stressed the limitations of its own test, suggesting that intelligence is too far beyond a concept to quantify with a single number, which is literally what the archetype of standardized tests are today. He even insisted that many factors influence intelligence and that it changes over time and that it only can be compared to children with similar backgrounds. The test was made for European children in France. IQ tests are weaponized against black students, particularly in minority students in general. They're based on Eurocentric middle class values and when we score low on them, they justify exclusion and prejudice research over me search. 